Well, boys and girls, it looks like we've come to the end of another chapter in what I lovingly refer to as the COVID cluster. And since many of you went home at Thanksgiving and will not return until spring, I thought I'd uh, just make a little video with my best buddy here and share a few parting thoughts and one last and one last Curtis life lesson. First, I want you to meet Ribby. Ribby, this is everybody. Everybody, this is Ribby. Ribby is my best buddy. People often ask me, oh, what kind of dog is Ribby? Well, some people think he's a German short hair pointer, but that's not completely true. You want to know what kind of dog Ribby really is? Spoiled. He's spoiled. And I'm not even sure he's purebred spoiled. I think he's spoiled mixed with just a little bit of needy and pathetic. But at the end of the day, he really is my best buddy, and he's been a good dog for us. So I thought that uh, I would answer one last question from the questionnaires you filled out the first day. I think I got most of the questions answered, except for the group of questions that go something like this. Why do you teach? Why do you teach at the college? Why did you decide to be a science teacher? Why did you decide to teach physics? Why don't you teach at the high school anymore? Well, uh, the short answer is I didn't choose to teach. Uh, I kind of fell into teaching. I did not go to school to be a teacher. Uh, I worked as a research chemist after I graduated from college for a few years. And when we moved back home, the job found me. My first teaching job ever was teaching physical science during a summer session at Dodge City Community College. And the fact that I've never really looked for a teaching job, they've always just found me, kind of solidifies my belief. Again, it's just a belief. Kind of solidifies my belief that you always end up just exactly where you're supposed to be. And things may not always work out the way you plan, but they do somehow always seem to work out. And now, uh, after that, I need to be a little honest with you about a couple things. When we watched the time travel video, and I put up dates of when I would go to, if I could go back in time, I was really only telling you half the truth. As much as I love Jackie Robinson, and think that he is a very important icon in American history. In fact, that is why number 42 is the passcode for this extra credit quiz you're going to take. It's not actually where I would go back to. If I could go back in time, I'd go back in time to when I was you, a student at Dodge City Community College back when I lived in Sheldon Hall, room 208, back before Legends Park was ever built and we had to play at Thoreau Field. It was a good time. And part of the reason I teach where I teach and what I teach and how I teach is because I want you guys to have those same experiences that I had over 30 years ago. The other thing I didn't quite tell you the total truth on was when we were talking about what we were afraid of. Um, if Miss Curtis was listing those, ketchup. Ketchup would be at the top. I'm not afraid of flying or heights or dying or anything like that. I'm a little worried about our fresh water supply, et cetera, et cetera, clean air, stuff like that. However, deathly afraid of ketchup. I don't even really like that we keep it in the house, okay? It's yucky, it's disgusting, and if you would like to see me flip out, just bring in bottles of ketchup, that'd pretty much do the trick. So, now that I've been honest with you, I want to close with one last story and Curtis' life lesson. It's called Two Beers and a Puppy, and it's a test I read about several years ago with how to judge people. Okay. 
And an easy way to judge people is with two bears and a puppy. All you got to do when you encounter a person, new or old, is ask yourself, would I have two bears with this person? And would I let this person watch my puppy? Now, some people are a no and a no. Those people need to be avoided. They're not good for you. They give off negative juju, bad vibes, okay? And you stay away from them. Some people are a no and a yes. These people may not be all that much fun. You don't want to have two beers or cups of coffee or hot cocoa or whatever it is normal people do with them, but they're good people and they do truly make the world a better place. And then there are some people who are a yes and a no. These people are okay to hang out with, but you need to exercise caution. They may be fun, but you can't necessarily really, really trust them when it matters the most. And then, then there are those rare and wonderful people that are a yes and a yes. These are the people you want to surround yourself with. These are the people you want on your team. These are the people who make your life worth living. They're the ones who know you best and love you anyway. Also, it doesn't hurt to ask yourself, how do people view me? Am I a yes and a yes? A no and a yes? Or am I a no and a no? Anyway, it's been a bizarre but good semester. I am truly better off for having known each and every one of you. Hopefully someday we'll return to normal. And I do have an open door policy, meaning that my door is always open. Once you're my student, you're always my student. And if you need anything down the road or next spring, do not hesitate to ask. Have a good break. Be safe. Be smart. And above all else, be kind.